Well, there you are. And none too soon, I would say. Be a dear and help me swing him into this cauldron, will you? Up and there we go. I'm sorry there was no one to meet you at the door, but as you can clearly see, someone thought Hakar would make a better longbow target than the head of my security force. The scoundrels made off with a few trinkets from my vault, but those things are fairly easy to replace. Good help is hard to find, though. We'll just get him to boiling and wait for the whistle. That shouldn't take too long. It does remind me, though, entirely too many dungeon masters out there go all to pieces whenever a band of murderous vagabonds shows up and kills one of their lieutenants. Death is not the end of your plans, my friends. It's just a stepping stone. The first lesson a dungeon master needs to learn is that no one is irreplaceable. If you have an orc warband at your command and a group of adventurers kills their leader, just follow the line of succession. Who was the second in command? Or if your minions weren't terribly organized, who is strong enough to bulldoze the remaining troops back into shape? We call this a field promotion, and where adventurers are concerned they can be annoyingly common. But what if you lose someone special? A true believer, or someone with a particular set of skills? Well, you find someone else willing to do the job. That might sound daunting, but you rarely have to look far. For example, if someone slays your strong right hand, ask who would want vengeance for his murder. His brother, the assassin? His mother, the demon priestess? A squire he once tutored in the black art of steel. New alliances can make sure your erstwhile lieutenant's loss was not in vain, and it allows you to organically face new threats. Resurrection is expensive, and there's no two ways about that. If you find yourself doing dirty deeds on the regular, though, you should probably have a little diamond dust set aside for a rainy day. While it's true that not every villain is a master of the mystic arts, there are a disproportionate number of powerful cults dedicated to dark gods and powerful fiends. All you need to do is bring the remains of your lieutenant to one of these centers of worship and strike a deal with whoever is wearing the biggest, gaudiest holy symbol. The cost is going to be high, but if your minions really are indispensable, it's a price you should be willing to pay. Also, if you want to be sneaky, have your lieutenant part with a piece of their body as a show of loyalty. A finger, an ear, a toe, etc. That way you can use spells like reincarnate or resurrection without tracking down your henchman's body. It also won't matter what his killers do to his corpse, as long as they don't raise him as an undead minion of their own. That could cause problems. Sometimes you don't just want your middle management back in one piece, though. You want them to be bigger, faster, stronger, and ready for another round with those so-called heroes who put them down the first time. Well, if that's the case, then you don't want to just resurrect them. You want to add a template. For example, if you want to invoke the lower powers, have your minion sign a contract with a devil, with the term stipulating that he must be killed before the bargain kicks in. This resurrects your minion, gives them a new power set, and only increases their CR by plus one. Alternatively, have your minion wear a dedicated suit of cursed armor, ensuring that after they die, their soul will linger in that armor, turning them into a grave knight. You could rebuild them with spare golem parts to give them the half-construct template. Or, if you have the appropriate sepulchral knowledge, you could even turn that slain servant into a mummified creature. Adding a template takes time typically costs a shiny silver piece, and requires a little forethought on your part. But if your lieutenant wasn't a match for his killers the first time around, this strategy will give him an edge the next time they meet. <laughs> ah, seems Hakar is finally done. Better give him a little time to cool off, though. The God's Breath kettle isn't the sort of thing you just walk off when you're done with it. Anyway, I hope you take this week's wisdom to heart, and remember to have a plan in place should someone deprive you of your favorite minion, while he still has tasks to complete. If you liked these suggestions, then subscribe to the page and tell your friends about us. If you've got questions or methods for coping with unexpected personnel loss I didn't mention, leave them in the comments below. Lastly, if you'd like to support us, then head to our Patreon or Facebook page in the description. Until next time, remember... Making a plan today 
will stop your schemes from getting stymied tomorrow.